one that's made in America, please? It's time to surprise with foods seemingly from other countries that are actually from the good old U.S. of A. Here are 10 foreign foods that were actually invented in America. I didn't lie. You didn't tell the truth. Fajitas. Watch out, hot plate. When you go to a Mexican restaurant, whether it's actually in Mexico or not, you would expect a minimum amount of authenticity in terms of the food. However, most of the dishes you find on the menus in America are, in fact, American and not at all Mexican. Take, for example, the famous and beloved fajitas. You know, the beef strips mixed with bell peppers and onions topped with a generous amount of shredded cheese and wrapped inside a soft tortilla. Apparently, nothing screams America more than these. First served in Texas, fajitas have become a staple dish on any respectable Tex-Mex menu across the country. If you respect me, I'll respect you. While not from Mexico, the dish most likely originated from Mexicans working near the border in West Texas in the 1930s. As pay, the workers were given the unwanted cuts of meat like fajita, skirt steak, that weren't likely to sell. Wanting to make the best out of the meat, they would marinate it in lime juice and pound it until it became more tender and cooked it over the fire. Nowadays, fajitas can be made with just about anything, such as beef, chicken, and even shrimp, and are served sizzling on a hot metal platter. This dish might have some Mexican roots thanks to the ranch workers who made do with what they had, but at the end of the day, it's still a Texas classic. I'm Sandy Cheeks from Texas. Spaghetti and meatballs. Oh, God! What? If I don't get some spaghetti and meatballs, I may literally die. Is there anything more comforting than a nice and warm plate of spaghetti and meatballs? But as much as we've gotten used to eating this dish in every good American-Italian restaurant, we're here to break the news. This dish isn't authentically Italian. Shocking, yes, but hear us out. Spaghetti, all by itself, is an Italian staple. The meatballs are also an Italian delicacy. But the two of them together on the same plate? That comes from an American mind. In Italy, meatballs are usually an appetizer or even a main course. For an Italian cook, adding meatballs to a pasta dish wouldn't make much sense. It's not just stupid. That's absurd. That's because pasta and main dishes are never served together. This now iconic fusion is rumored to have originated from Italian-American immigrants who came to New York in the early 20th century. The earliest known recipe for spaghetti and meatballs was actually published by the National Pasta Association, a trade association, in 1920. Americans were so accustomed to having a starch accompaniment to their protein, early Italian restaurants in America put the two together to please the American palate. If you ever go to Italy, don't expect to find any spaghetti and meatballs on the menu. Don't even think about it. Don't even dream about it. Fortune cookies. I predict you will soon all say, Aww. One of the best parts of ordering Chinese food takeout is the sweet little piece of wisdom you get at the end of the meal. However, no matter how bright or funny the little quotes are, it doesn't really matter because they're not authentic to China. Indeed, fortune cookies have nothing to do with Chinese culture. Instead, they might have been invented by Japanese restaurateurs in Los Angeles or San Francisco, with both competing for ownership. The idea came from another confection flavored with sesame seeds that was first made in Kyoto in the 19th century. It contained o mikuji, which are short blessings, sometimes curses, as well as financial or personal predictions. Uh, what's your fortune say? You will enjoy the company of others. It was during World War II, when Japanese Americans were interned and lost their businesses, that Chinese bakers took over the industry and tweaked the recipe for the wise little cookie. The Japanese Tea Garden in San Francisco's Golden Gate Park and the Hong Kong Noodle Company in Los Angeles both claimed to have invented the popular modern fortune cookie. But no matter who the genius was behind the fortune cookie, we can't deny how this staple of a Americanized Chinese food has become an icon all over the world. Well, except in China, of course. There is no such thing as fortune cookies in China. The Cuban Sandwich. I call this story Ted and the Cuban Sandwich Crisis. 
Sometimes names can be very misleading. Just because something has a foreign sounding name doesn't mean that it's not from here. This applies to the very delicious Cuban sandwich, also known as the Cubano. Contrary to popular belief, the Cuban sandwich was not invented in Cuba. It was rather formulated by immigrant cigar makers in Key West, Florida in the late 19th century and was later refined to the sandwich we now know and love. Since cigar factory workers needed a quick, easy, and nutritious lunch, cultures and ingredients ingredients combined to create the Cubano. It's alive! It's alive! The traditional recipes include crispy Cuban bread, a type of baguette-like loaf with a thin, crisp crust, roasted pork, ham, Swiss cheese, yellow mustard, and pickles. Because of a large Italian population in Tampa, salami is usually added to what has officially been dubbed the signature sandwich of the city. Obviously, you can pretty much add whatever toppings you'd like and make a personalized Cuban sandwich as long as you keep the main ingredients. But the important thing to remember is that while the Cubano came from Cubans, this delicacy was ultimately invented right here in America. Man, it's your motherland. What are you thinking? Chimichangas. Time to make the chimichangas. 30 seconds. While they may look and taste like they came right out of an authentic Mexican eatery, these little deep-fried burritos are actually from Tucson, Arizona. Funnily enough, chimichangas were apparently invented completely by accident in the 1920s by the founder of El Charro Cafe, the city's oldest Mexican restaurant. The story goes that Monica Flynn, the founder, dropped a burrito into a vat of bubbling fat one day. She was then about to exclaim a Spanish curse word, but since there were children around, she shouted chimichanga instead, which translates to thingamajig. <laughs> Another origin story says that it was Phoenix-based chain Macayo's Mexican Kitchen who was responsible for the chimichanga. Founder Woody Johnson apparently invented the dish under similar circumstances as he was experimenting in the kitchen, but that wasn't until the 1940s. Of course, regardless of who the true inventor is, we know that it was invented in Arizona and that chimichangas have become one of the most iconic dishes in America. We might never know the true origins of chimichangas, but the mix of meat, beans and rice all wrapped up in a crunchy, deep-fried tortilla topped with salsa, sour cream, or guacamole will always be a Mexican-American classic. Would you like to buy some chimichangas? General Tso's Chicken. General Tso's Chicken isn't made by a general. Most of the dishes on the menu at your local Chinese takeout joint aren't actually Chinese. Instead, they are adapted to fit our Western tastes while keeping a Chinese name. Like General Tso's Chicken, for instance. Even though it was named after a 19th century Chinese military leader, Tso Song Tang, it has no real connection to traditional Chinese cuisine. This Hunan-style preparation of chicken pieces fried in a cornstarch-based batter was invented by Pang Changhui in the 1950s and was heavy, sour, hot, and salty. But it was the New York chef, Sheng Ting Wong, who tweaked the recipe by crisping and sweetening the formerly spicy tart dish with ginger, garlic, soy sauce, and rice vinegar, to name a few of the changes. Come on, buddy, change it up a little bit. The General Tso's chicken you'll find today at all-you-can-eat buffets and takeout joints are usually much sweeter and crispier than the original recipe, which is more than perfect for the American palate. In 2015, according to Grubhub, the online and mobile food ordering service, General Tso's chicken was the most popular Chinese takeout order and the fourth most popular dish in general. So as much as it's delicious and beloved, just remember that it's not as genuine as you thought. This is not a big deal. It's a little white lie. Everyone does it. English muffins. You make muffins? Well, it wasn't the muffin fairy. You know, those little fluffy buns we usually use to make breakfast sandwiches were invented by an English immigrant named Samuel Bath Thomas in 1880. He opened up a bakery in New York City where he started selling a twist on traditional English crumpets called toaster crumpets. Crumpets, which are leavened griddle cakes with a spongy texture, have been popular in the UK for ages, so he simply had to bring the flavor to America. This new porous and still spongy muffin was cut in half and toasted, unlike their predecessors, which were eaten whole. They could either be put in a toaster or under a broiler, both resulting in a crispy base that became a common alternative to toast. You got replaced, 
just like me. This was eventually dubbed the English Muffin, yes, because its creator was a British man, but also so it wouldn't be confused with, well, the cake-like regular muffins. Today, English muffins are often seen as the breakfast bread of choice to create delicious egg and cheese sandwiches and even breakfast pizzas if you're feeling a little more adventurous. Even to this day, Thomas's company, which is now owned by Mexico's Grupo Bimbo, is still by far the largest supplier of English muffins in the country. The small, round, and flat little treat might be English by its name, but at the end of the day, it's an American treasure. <sighs> California Roll Enjoy your California handmade roll! Technically, sushi does come from Japan. After all, it is a traditional Japanese dish. The only problem is, most sushi you'll find at restaurants in America has nothing to do with the real sushi you can find in Japan. Some are more obvious, like anything with dessert items or really strange combinations, but some are more subtle and fly right under the radar, like the California roll, for example. Sure, the name should have given it all away, but a lot of people still believe that this roll was invented in Japan. Made with avocado, cucumber, and imitation crab, the California roll is an all-American invention. I was a public defender for many years. I've been lied to by the best. The first telltale sign would have to be how the seaweed is featured on the inside of the sushi, which is not particularly traditional. Now on to the name. Even though it's been dubbed a California roll, its true origin is uncertain. Some chefs in Los Angeles and Vancouver, British Columbia all claim to have invented the famous dish. But LA-based chef Ken Suesa has the first documented version of this dish from an Associated Press article published in 1979 and claims ownership of the California roll. Other American sushi rolls include the spicy tuna roll, as spicy food isn't the norm in Japan, the Philadelphia roll, and the rainbow roll. Yeah, it's all fake. French dressing. French wine, French food, French water. Whoever said salads were boring? With so many options to dress your plate with, how could it ever be boring? One of the most beloved ways to pep up a salad is definitely French dressing, the Swedish creamy orange sauce that makes an everyday salad a little more delicious. But as popular as it is in the U.S., you will most likely never find this dressing in France. No, the French dress up their salads a little more subtly using vinaigrette, an emulsion of olive oil and wine vinegar, with Dijon mustard, salt, and sometimes shallots, garlic, and herbs mixed in. Their vinaigrette has nothing to do with our tangy, ketchup-based dressing that's made with vinegar, sugar, Worcestershire sauce, paprika, garlic powder, and celery seed. You're not real. The first reported French dressing to hit American grocery store shelves was Milani's 1890 French dressing, which appeared around 1938. So why is French dressing called French dressing then? It's still a mystery, since it has no relation to France whatsoever, but it's not the only foreign-named condiment that is, in fact, American. Russian dressing is also an imposter, since it does not come from Russia. In other words, don't believe everything you see on the label. Aw, oh, stupid commercials. Chop suey. Tomorrow's lunch is American chop suey. Aside from General Tso's chicken, there's one other Chinese dish that hits the spot every time, and that's chop suey. Although it would be fair to mention that the chop suey you all know and love today is probably not the most authentic dish out there. You see, the American version of chop suey is usually made with meat or chicken, bean sprouts, celery, and other vegetables, which was probably invented as a way to cheaply feed miners or railroad workers in the 19th century by Chinese-American cooks in San Francisco. Another story says that it was invented in New York City by a diplomat from China who is visiting the city and hosting American guests for dinner. Give me one good reason why I should believe you. Not wanting to risk preparing authentic Chinese food for his guests, he asked the chef to improvise, and voila, chop suey was born. That stir-fry hash of meat is what you will most likely find on Chinese restaurants' menus in America and is, well, from America. The real chop suey, however, is a little different. It is related to a regional Cantonese dish called sop sui, which is made with minced organ meats and not ground beef. But no matter who came up with the Americanized version, just know that the chop suey takeout you just ordered is not the real deal. That's the hard truth.
I made my peace with it. Get a taste of more great videos. Just tap or click and leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell.